So very, very good day to all of you. And uh, my name is Sunil Shah and I am founder director of FACT and we started FACT in 1998 to uh, guide students for university education. So 1998 is a very long time, it's been 24 years and of course because we have guided students for the last 24 years, some of the students have gone ahead and made a wonderful career for themselves. So it is always my effort to introduce my old students to the new students so that they can learn from the experiences of the old students, how they are doing and stuff like that. Even the parents can uh, get benefit out of this. So today we have on this beautiful sunny day at Ohio, Toledo. Uh, we are on a boat that we recently purchased for uh, taking students on weekends. And we have a wonderful couple today with us. Uh, incidentally, the name of the student is also Sunil Shah, like me. And uh, his beautiful wife, uh, Lily, is with us. Uh, she's from, uh, she's a Mexican origin, American born uh, girl. They recently got married and this is their first visit to Toledo to meet me and uh, we are having a gala of a time. So uh, Sunil has been my student, he was from Mumbai, uh, he met uh, his wonderful wife in US when they were in the grad school and are married today. Uh, I'll quickly tell you, both of them are PhDs in life sciences, mm -hmm. I think particularly in cancer biology or something like right. that. So Sunil, I remember you came to me after 12th and uh, you wanted to do medicine and uh, I sent you to Mississippi State University for a pre-med program. Now a very uh, stressful part of my job is to attend to hundreds of students every year uh, coming to my office and saying that they want to do medicine. Mm -hmm. Now for a 16, 17 year old kid to understand what medical education is in itself, if you may agree, mm -hmm. is a very unlikely kind of... A, I agree. <laughs> I 100% agree. But uh, the parents get offended, you know, when I say that, okay, you know, you want to do medicine. It's like somebody coming to me and saying, I want to be a Shah Rukh Khan. Or <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So that's how, you know, this dilemma comes to me. So you are the best example of that blue-eyed boy wanting to do medicine, uh, starry-eyed, parents are very happy. Right. And then I sent you to a god for second place in Mississippi <laughs> State. Uh, how has this journey been? And you know, what will be your advice to these people who at the age of 16, 17, mm -hmm. suddenly wake up and say, I want to be a doctor? Uh, wow, that's a loaded question, man, <laughs> Sameel. Uh, and I hope to do justice to it. So if I babble, feel free to edit that out in the video. Uh, but I feel that the journey so far has been incredible, uh, partly because uh, you helped me filter out and differentiate my intensity and uh, my ambition from what I want to do in the moment. Uh, so when I came to you as that blue-eyed, starry-eyed 16-year-old, you, you heard what I wanted to say was, I want to go outside and explore a life and a career outside. I want to get those experiences. Uh, but the only way I know how to do that is medicine. And you told me, you made me realize that there's other ways to go about exactly. it. Um, so, you know, to put it in simple terms, you can eat it like this or you can go around and eat it like this. <laughs> so, uh, I think you helped me figure out that this is what I want to do and right. medicine is not, not the only way to go about it. Um, going to Mississippi as a pre-med, definitely, you know, I had medicine school in my sights. Uh, but as I started exploring and going more and more through my undergraduate degree, meeting people here, exploring the plethora of majors that you have available exactly. and that you can switch to once you are here, it made me start thinking that maybe I am not all that into medicine and I, maybe I said medicine because that is what I wanted to do, you know, when I was 16. Um, and as I started doing, you know, odd jobs for my, for my pocket money, so to speak, for my education and, you know, monthly expenses, I started doing a student research assistant job and that's what got me to research and I realized that I like working behind the scenes more rather than at the front lines like a doctor would so to speak which led me to get my PhD and again during my PhD I was like yeah I'm gonna be a researcher and I'm gonna get a freaking Nobel Prize <laughs> and during my PhD um, I, I realized that you don't know again I'm doing that uh, I'm, I'm trying to get something and I'm unable to differentiate what I want versus the way to go about it. Right. And uh, I once again had a serious evaluation of my strengths and competencies and realized that I am much better off talking about science uh, and enabling other researchers 
to do what they do best rather than being a Nobel Prize aspirant myself. <laughs> <laughs> so be a king maker than a king. There you go. So that's what. They often know. have more power and, anyways. <laughs> and, uh, exactly. And I have been a king maker so there to say go. all my life. Oh, thank right? you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's so much fun to help other people realize their dreams right. and what you get in return is like this boat. <laughs> 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 so yeah. that has been the situation. So I would like to take a few uh, inputs from Sunil and explain this to all the parents and students who are watching this video, particularly the medical aspiring people. Life is a long journey guys and when you say at the age of 16 or 17 I want to be a doctor, please don't misunderstand me when I say you don't know enough about life to decide that you want to be a doctor to take that kind of a, a, a large decision of your life and same thing I would not want to be uh, telling to the parents what I like uh, Sunil and I want you to uh, comment on this I could have sent you to uh, Philippines or Russia or China or uh, East Europe uh, uh, or Georgia to do medicine mm -hmm. and then you would have realized that medicine is not for you right Hopefully you would have been nowhere because you have already studied medicine. Right. Vis-a-vis -vis US where you had a four year of a pre-medicine experience mm -hmm. to explore what you are doing whether it is right or wrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then deciding. Mm -hmm. Isn't it good for people who want to have medical aspirations at the age of 16 which we agree is too young to have mm -hmm. that aspiration mm -hmm. to come to US mm -hmm. and spend another four years on that aspiration and see. I feel that's, that's great and uh, I feel that it is almost a requirement. Uh, you have to shadow doctors, you have to go volunteer your time in hospitals, you have to participate in research programs, you have to come up with your original research projects that you work on. Uh, you have to do a hundred things and that still might not be enough uh, or strong enough for your application. So I feel that the intensity that you come to America with that I'm going to be a doctor tomorrow is really put to test during those four years. Exactly. And uh, those four years almost afford you an opportunity to test the waters out because you're still immersing yourself in a medical environment, you're interacting with doctors, you are interacting and you're participating actively in research studies, um, you're studying pre-medicine subjects in your major. Um, so when you're doing that, you, you fully acknowledge and realize what you are stepping into. Right. Uh, you, it, it's, it's very romanticized. Yeah, exactly. Hard work is very romanticized <laughs> in medicine school. Uh, and it's when, when you, you know, and all, all power to the people who are intelligent and who make it and who go into medicine school. This is not a commentary to not go into medicine exactly. school. Exactly. This is a commentary to encourage you to test out what a medicine school environment looks like when you do your undergraduate in America right. and reevaluate your option uh, and not lock yourself in for a career which wouldn't even happen. Uh, let's see, four years of undergrad, four years of med school, two years of residency if you do specialization another two years of school and another year of specialization so that's longer than a phd yeah. and you're locking yourself into a 16 to 17 year educational commitment based on uh, very little experience or exposure to that field True. or that environment you don't you don't get to see what a medicine environment in america looks like sitting in dubai or india yeah. um, and so coming here for an undergraduate major which is somewhat related. I have seen people in mechanical engineering go to med school True. as long as you have the prerequisite subjects. So it really does afford you an opportunity to explore what your strengths and weaknesses are in, in an environment, I have to say, for some people, which is away from pressure and away from competition. Yeah. Uh, so you can really do, you really do feel like I'm going to play to my strengths and I'm going to see what I'm good at. Uh, and that's not universal, but that definitely plays, an, uh, plays a part for some students. Uh, Along with you, around the same time that you went, there was another student of mine called Nandita Mahajan who right, went. Right? right, right. And she did her medical. Exactly, exactly. So Exhibit A. <laughs> yeah. So she uh, went, she wanted to be a doctor and she became one. So right. it's not that I, I or you or me, both are Sunil Shahs, we, don't, we are not <laughs> here to tell you not to do medicine. Right, right. Exactly. It's about guys spend some more time. Yeah. You know, 16 or 17 is too young. And yeah. parents wake up yeah, with this stupid taste of visualizing your child as a doctor in a white apron with a stethoscope. Right. It's girlish, it's childish. Yeah, I mean. And it's ruining the life of the child. Now here I am with Sunil Shah who realized it twice. He went for pre-medicine, 
He said, no, looks like research is good for me. He went for research, completed PhD. Then he realized, okay, doing a research or enabling other people to do the research. That one is more. So talking about science is more suitable. So now he is working for a very large company, helping people do research on cancer biology. Now that's what I call it as a good career. Thank you. So when you when you don't when you don't when you don't when you decide not to do what you have come here for doing, the next best thing is also equally good. So my next question is to you, Lily, and uh, this is something which I have been telling students and parents for uh, so many years. But I want you to uh, listen to me and tell me how do you feel about this. And that is many a times I find research in medicine as intellectually more stimulating than practicing medicine. Mm -hmm. Because what the doctors do is what the scientists have established as a proven technology 10 years ago. Yes. So you are always 10 years ahead of the practicing medicine people in terms of whatever field that you are working in. Is that right? Yes. Um, it's a lot more limited for the doctors because they are just prescribing treatments. Right. Uh, but the researchers, uh, they are the ones who are actually investigating and constantly trying to figure out more how a particular drug works, how this cancer started, what pathways are affected, what drugs will help with it, um, constantly trying to improve. And so, yeah, it's... Right? So you, you, you are more liberated, you yes. are more uh, free to try mm -hmm. out different things. The doctors can only do what has been proved on your table to be effective. Yes. Right? Yes. So that's one thing which I want to tell all the students and parents. Listen to this. A research in medical will always be intellectually more stimulating. And if you were to be practicing doctors, do you think you will have a weekend like this? You know, <laughs> ever in your career? Uh, you know, yeah, very that few, might be hard. Yeah. Right? It, it will be, be really hard. hard. You yeah. may be making maybe double the amount of money, but what's the use of that money yeah. if you can't enjoy that uh, time? Today they are researchers, they are they are working limited hours a, a week and they can travel around, they can uh, you know, have a good life. Ask any uh, medical person in the US, life is not that easy. Nandita incidentally is as close to me and Shraddha ma'am as, uh, as you are to me. So Nandita is as close to Shraddha ma'am as you are to me. But we can't meet Nandita because of her busy schedule. Now I'm going to send this interview to Nandita and at least try to find out whether she can come on Zoom. Right. for a meeting similar to right. uh, this because Sunil Shah and Nandita are two of my best examples of what I say when I tell you that plan the career in medicine my way because these are two wonderful people who have followed that path and both have become extremely successful in their way. So that was me Sunil Shah and my student Sunil Shah and his beautiful wife Lily talking to you today. It was a weekend that was full of fun but we decided to come together and guide students also. Thank you for being with us. Thank you Sunil. Of course. Thank you Lily. Thank you. And uh, your, your thoughts, your ideas, your opinions will really help a lot of youngsters. For sure. For sure. Thank you very much. If you, if you like this video, comment and say that you have liked this video because they can read the comments sitting at home and say that you know, this weekend has been worth it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.